right, well, I guess we're good to go. Um, thank you for coming. I'm uh, Andrew Morton. Uh, going to do the, can you hear me? Is that working? No? At all? Is this better? At all? Anybody hear me? Louder? Can anybody hear me? <clears throat> How's this? All right. It sounds really loud up here either way, so, you know. Um, so I'm Andrew Morton, uh, going to be giving a talk on uh, uh, the Migrate module and, uh, you know, getting stuff into Drupal. Um, I'm one of the maintainers, uh, the uh, progen pro pro the guy that started it, uh, Mike Ryan, is here in the front. Um, I think, uh, I don't know if Moshe's in this room, but um, they're, they're also giving another, I think more of kind of like a business-oriented talk after this in the same room. So. Um, if uh, if this one's a little too technical, then you know maybe that's that's the one you want. Um, so you've got this old website or you know CSV file or you know something that you're trying to get into Drupal. Um, I'm I'm guessing you're here because you want a better way to do that. Um, could we get a show of hands of or like you know just shout out what you guys are doing right now like. You know, what's, what's your strategy? You know, do you have the intern copy and paste things or? Um, oh, so node import feeds um, CSV file with like a custom script or do you do it with feeds? Oh, you wanna know, okay, all right. Um, cool, so yeah, I, I definitely had done some kind of, you know, the, the full range of things, um, used feeds, CSV files, little custom script and, and whatnot. And, um, and uh, I think Migrate's a much better solution. So um, here's kind of my goals for this presentation. Um, the, uh, the Migrate module is uh, kind of complex, but it's complex for a reason. And what I wanna do is give you kind of like the mental framework to understand it so you can understand, you know, why it seems as inscrutable as it does. Um, and then we'll kind of step through the basics of like how you would build a migration module. And um, you know, if you guys are contrib maintainers, then I'm gonna try to convince you that it's worth your time to provide support for migrate in your modules. So we're gonna talk about uh, migrate 2.0. There was a 1.0 version that was um, primarily views driven. You'd use, um, you know, views to kind of do all the uh, mapping between source and destination. Um, migrate 2 is uh, primarily code-based. There's a, there's a UI and there's a Drush interface, but um, all of the setup and configuration is done in um, PHP classes. And it's got a steep learning curve. You know, you might call it the migraine module because I spent two weeks just banging my head against it before I got to the point where I was like, oh, okay, here's how you actually get this to work. So what I really don't want is you guys to have that experience. Hopefully, you know, you'll get done with this and the, uh, the, the, the system will make a little more sense. Um, I'm, what I'm not gonna do is demonstrate the UI or the Drush interface. Um, they're both pretty neat. Um, I'm gonna show you the screenshot to prove that they do exist and encourage you to uh, check those out in your own time. Um, there's also a, a Drupal 6 version that's basically a backport of the 7 in, in a lot of ways. Um, it uses DBNG, DBTNG and autoload. Um, so you can kind of jump back and forth pretty easily, um, except that then you're back in Drupal 6 and like wondering why nothing works right. Um, there's the Migrate Extras module, which is sort of the, uh, you know, uh, dumping ground for um, contrib module support that isn't in those contributed modules. So, you know, like address field and, and um, I'm gonna space out on thinking of like web, web form, um, you know, those kind of things that haven't been put into the module, those live in, mod in uh, Migrate Extras. So you wanna take a look there if you're trying to um, figure out how to get something into, uh, into Drupal. Um, and one other thing that's kind of important to point out is that the, uh, the best documentation for it, uh, aside from this presentation, is in the, um, the beer and wine files in the Migrate example module. Um, those get updated pretty much with any kind of change and they, they serve as um, unit tests for the, for the module. So um, give that a look. There's a ton of, a ton of really uh, useful information in there. It's all really well documented and um, you know, and you can kind of copy and paste a lot of stuff to get started. 
uh, I've given this talk a couple times and this generally comes up like why not just use feeds and you know I'm a, I'm a pragmatist like if it works for you use it it's it's a lot easier to set up um, it uh, you know you can kind of almost hand it off to the admin to go you know kind of map the fields um, but migrate is definitely going to be like a higher performance solution uh, you're going to be able it's it's going to run a lot faster you're not trying to have it be cron driven um, and uh, where feeds kind of falls down is where you've got a couple of different things that you're bringing in and you need to have some kind of relationships between them um, and that's where uh, migrate is a better solution so we'll kind of talk about the uh, the theory of this and like I say kind of explain why mig migrate is um, what it is so you got a um, you know, you got a source and you got a destination, right? You got something you're coming out of and something you're going into. And, you know, those have, you know, fields in the, you know, in, in the, like, say, SQL sense on the source side and on the, in the Drupal field sense on the destination. Well, not necessarily. I don't know. Pretend I. Uh, so, you know, your source, it's, it's kind of the interface into, into whatever you've already got. If it's a, you know, CSV file, if it's a, um, you know, Microsoft SQL Server, uh, you know, other, uh, another um, MySQL database, um, you know, uh, a web feed, that kind of thing. And, and what it really provides is just a list of fields and um, optionally descriptions about them. And, and then it just needs to be able to step through them in, in order. It just needs to be able to iterate across them. On the uh, destination side, it's, it's a little bit more complicated because uh, it, needs to handle writing it and so for the uh, most of the, the, the Drupal entities that uh, you know come come with Drupal core the support is, is already provided um, you know the, the entities like users and nodes um, you know those you're not going to problem with but you can also do other things on the destination side there's um, a destination that'll just let you write SQL rows um, and uh, one thing that's kind of important to point out is the uh, the destination is for a, sp for a specific type so if you've got, say, a table full of um, user information that you're going to use to create users and then to create, um, you know, profile two profiles, that needs to be two different, um, that's two different destinations. And um, the migration, so you're actually going to end up with two migrations. You're going to end up with one that creates users and one that creates uh, the profiles. So the next kind of step is, um, you know, you've got fields on both sides. What, what goes where? Um, and so they, the, the, the concept for that is a, a field mapping. And um, the way that kind of works is you just give it the, um, on the source side, you give it a field name. On the destination side, you give it a field name. And it, it encapsulates some other information. Um, and as the kind of example shows, like you don't have to map all the fields. Um, you know, some things may be null. There's some stuff that, you know, you just don't care about on the source side. Um, and you know maybe on the destination side you just want to hard code default values. Um, so you know again it, it kind of holds on to uh, you know the names of the fields on each side, and it has some uh, the ability to do some kind of basic transformations. If you've got like a comma separated um, you know field, it can it can split those out so that then they can be treat, you know handled as an array. Like if you're going into a multi-value field on the destination side. Um, and, and it, it has the ability to hold uh, arguments that it can pass to the destination. Um, and we'll, we'll say more about those later. Um, so with those first three pieces, you basically have what feeds gives you, right? You've got you know, some kind of abstraction on the source side. You've got uh, a destination. And you've got f you know, field mappings. And, and what I'd said was that you know, that feeds kind of falls down when you've got more than one type. And you need to have a relationship between them. Um, and so one of the, the, the way that kind of migrate uh, addresses that is um, with a migration map and it tracks the, um, the source ID and then what it becomes in the destination ID. So if you're importing something and say uh, you're importing you know, articles and users, um, when you bring them into Drupal, they're probably going to have new IDs. You know, your WordPress user ID is not going to be the same as your Drupal user ID. So when you go to import your articles, you, you know, you're, you, you're given the WordPress ID but you want the Drupal user ID. So what the, uh, the mig mi excuse me, migration map does is let you look up what the old ID is and kind of translate back and forth. Um, so to do that, it needs to know um, what, your, what your keys look like. What, what do the IDs look like? 
Um, so it'll support composite keys, which is the, the case where you'd have um, uh, uh, an ID that's um, in two separate fields. So, um, and then it has a couple of other nice side effects. Since you're keeping track of um, all the IDs that you've created, you can do a rollback and delete all those records. Um, and then the other is that you could rerun a migration. So you imported those articles and you realize that, oh, the, uh, you know, the, the, the time zone is all screwy. So you can just you know, fix that in your migration, rerun it, and then it'll update those articles in place so you don't have to um, you know, run up your node ID counter or whatever. Um, and then the, the next piece is, is a, a migration that kind of wraps it and puts all the pieces together. And, and that's, the, uh, that, that's actually what you'll be building. You, you um, implement a migration class, and uh, it has a couple of other little helper functions that I'm just gonna like, mention here so that you know kind of uh, visually where they live. Um, but I'll say more about it when we talk about building a, a migration. Um, and so, yeah, as I said, it's, it's, it's where you uh, configure all the pieces, you know, the source, the destination, the map, and then all the field mappings. Um, And then the next kind of piece is the, um, the, the field handlers. And so if you think about the way that Drupal um, kind of builds entities, they're these, like the fields are typically these like nested arrays and it's, uh, it's a non-obvious structure. It's, it's kind of complicated. Um, and if you think about what the source is gonna be, the source is gonna be a simple value. It's gonna be a string, it's gonna be an ID. Um, you know, and, it's, and, and so how do you get it from that single value into that nested array, and, and that's the job of the, the field handlers. Um, and, and they also are, are what consumes the, the, the data that you put into those arguments on the field mapping. Um, there's, there's one other kind of piece that is more of kind of an implementation detail, but um, is, is of interest, and just to be complete here, we'll talk about it. It's the destination handler. Um, what that does is lets you kind of extend a destination without the destination having to know about all the possible handlers or if there's a module that gets turned on. Um, like the, the obvious an example is the comment module where it adds a couple fields to the node that if you don't have comment enabled, you don't care about. So um, node doesn't have to care about, uh, the node destination doesn't have to care about the comments. Uh, the comment destination handler can take care of that. Um, some of these names get a little long, so you can blame Mike. Um, yeah, sort of the, the, the same thing. And, and the destination handler is one of the things that uh, contrib uh, module maintainers might need to create. So let's look at this in practice, right? Um, you know, sounds good, but what, what does it actually look like? Um, the way that you go about building the module is, the first off, just put it in a separate module. Don't put it in with the rest of your custom site functionality because what you want to do is be able to just turn this off. Once you get everything into your site, turn it off. Um, there's some other use cases for Migrate where you might have it doing continuous imports, but um, for the most part, you still want that in a separate module. So go ahead and create a new module. Don't just do it in Migrate Example. Create a new module with your namespace, and then you can leave Migrate Example alone to you know, copy and paste from. Um, and then you need to implement the, uh, the Migrate API hook. Uh, you know, create a class. Sometimes I'll just get, if it's a single migration, I'll just put it in the module file, be a little lazy. Um, and then in the constructor, you, know, you set up the, uh, the source destination map and the you know, field mappings. Um, and if, it, if the class is in a separate uh, uh, .inc file, then you want to make sure you add it to the uh, .info file so that the autoloader can find it. Um, so here's kind of what the constructor would look like. Uh, there's there's the four or there's the uh, the three properties and then one function that that you'll be calling to to do that setup. And we'll go through each of these in uh, in turn. Um, so here's a like a SQL source. Um, it's a dbtng query, you know, it's pulling up the uh, what beer topic table, it picks out a couple fields, um, it sets a sort, I don't really know why we did that, but um, so you take that query and you pass it into the um, migrate source SQL class and then it, uh, it, it's able to go and turn that into a count query so it can figure out how many things you're going to be importing and, um, you know, does, does some other stuff, but that's, that's kind of the basic 
the, the most basic use of a, of a SQL source. Um, one thing you'll notice is that you're not specifying uh, a list of fields uh, or you know, the, the source fields, it's able to pull that out of the query. So um, like when you contrast that to like a CSV file, um, because there you just kind of have numbered columns, um, you, you want to give them like a little bit more readable names. Um, so for a CSV file, you'd build an array of the names and then uh, you know, optionally in descriptions. And um, I think that's, I think this, this might have a, a little typo in it, but um, then you give it a path to the uh, CSV file and the, the column information, and then, then that's your source for, for that example. Um, there's, other, there's, there's quite a few other sources for doing like XML files, JSON files. Um, for those, you're probably gonna have to do some tweaking, right? Because if you're trying to pull in some, uh, like something out of an API for like a JSON file, you'll probably end up subclassing um, one of the existing sources and overriding some stuff, maybe adding pagination or adding caching. Um, you'll probably definitely want to add caching. Um, and there's a couple of base classes to help with those. Um, I'm not really going to dig into it too much. Um, I'm going to leave this slide here so that afterwards when you realize you need them, you'll go download the slides and, um, you know, kind of read about it. Uh, the next is the, uh, the migration map. And uh, as I would kind of mentioned, it needs to know what those, uh, the keys on the source and destination side look like. So you do that using the, um, the, the um, Drupal's uh, schema, uh, like hook schema format, and you'd give it an array of your, uh, your, your, your fields on the source side. On the destination, um, there's typically helper functions. So the destination class, and then it'll be um, the, the gets key, get key schema function, so, um, so that you don't have to manually type those in. One other thing that I, I should mention is that first parameter to the SQL map is the um, migration's um, machine name. And, and the reason it needs to know that, so I'll just say what the machine name is. That's basically the class name, but if it has migrate on the end, it just deletes migrate so that it's a little, um, little shorter. And, and the reason you want to specify that is so that um, when you're having a, another migration uh, look up a key in it, it knows what it's called. Um, so let's look at the destinations. Um, these are a little simpler, right? Because there's not as much variation. Um, Drupal knows what, you know, what the what the term, how to how to build the term, how to you know build an article, um, and so uh, to figure out what you're going to pass into the constructor on those, like on the on the term that's a machine name for a taxonomy uh, vocabulary. Um, you know, the nodes is going to be a, a node type uh, user. You don't need one, but uh, I'd, I'd say pull up the. Uh, pull up the class for that and you can usually see sometimes there's some other options that um, you know you might might find useful and the uh, the last kind of piece is the is the field mappings and so that's how you get um, you know source to destination uh, one little quirky thing is the the order the destination is the first parameter um, the source is the second and and the reason for that is in that next example there's the uh, the default value where uh, so that you don't have a source so it, it's a, it's less awkward having it be destination default value rather than you know null comma destination, um, and the add field mappings function returns uh, a class that you can then call the functions on, and those are those are chainable so that um, you know you can specify a separator, pass some arguments in, um, and have a bit more compact syntax. Um, so the one kind of problem with uh, migrate right now that there's there's you know we're trying to kind of figure out how to address is that if you have a field that has multiple kind of sub values in it, say the node body, well yeah like a node body, um, it has you know the, the body text, it has a, a HTML or a you know a filter format, and it has a, a summary. Well, so there's three different pieces there, but my uh, migrate really only sees it as one field. So the question is, how do you pass those other values in? And the kind of the hack that we've come up with is you pass it in through the arguments. Um, not great. Hopefully, we'll get that sorted out pretty quick. But um, so it has a little bit of a of a kind of quirky format to it. If you pass in just a literal value, 
um, like in the, in the example there, you know, format of one, uh, that's going to be hard coded as one. But if you use that uh, array notation where it's an array with a source field key, um, whatever the value of that key is, uh, will be used as a field name and it'll go look up the value of that, that field. So in this case, you know, we're importing, um, we're, we're taking the teaser field on this row and that's going to go into the, into the summary on it, on the destination side. Um, one, one thing I guess I should mention is if you, if you guys have questions or something doesn't quite make sense, you know, just shout something out because uh, otherwise I'll just kind of keep steamrolling along here. Um, so some of the, some of the uh, arguments have little helper functions to build them. Um, I personally think that first example is much harder to read when you have to remember the order of the things. I think the second where you pass in named uh, parameters in, in the array is, is a little bit easier. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, I think that's us trying to work around a failure in the API by kind of putting another Band-Aid on it. Um, so let's talk about how you would do that lookup of, of user and, uh, art and, and the user and article example that I that I'd mentioned. Um, the way you do that is you specify a source migration on the field mapping. So in this, we'd be creating our articles. And on the old site, it was author, author underscore ID. On the new site, it's uh, UID. And so what we want to do is we want to translate that using the migration map um, from the beer user migration. And so for this to really work, you kind of want the beer user migration to have already run. So you use a dependency. Um, you, for, for that, you can, you can pass an array of migration names. And um, migrate won't let you run this migration until the dependencies have been um, fulfilled. And so with those, those pieces, you could pretty much do quite a bit of, uh, quite, a, quite a bit with migration. Um, but there's a few other functions that you can use to kind of customize the flow. Um, confusingly, uh, they're named prepare row and prepare and complete. Um, the, the, the best I've been able to figure is that prepare came first and then we decided we needed something else so we had to prepare row. Um, so we'll try to make it clear what does what. Um, prepare row gets called when the when the the source is is um, looking at records, and you are able to skip a record, it's kind of the first pass. Say you're importing files, and you want to um, you want to skip over temporary files. So what you do is uh, you just return false. If it's you know um, whatever the the status field is temp, you know then you return false. That row gets skipped, and you don't end up with anything on the destination side. Um, you can also make changes to it. So, you know, say you want to um, convert a, uh, you know, date string into a timestamp or, um, you know, fix the case on something. Um, this is an easy place to do that because this will happen before it gets transformed into the, um, gets transformed by the, the um, destination uh, field handlers into uh, that array structure. So it's a real easy place to do it. You can just, you know, fix it on the row. The next, uh, function you can implement to, to affect the flow is um, prepare and it, it hands you two pieces. It hands you um, the, the entity that's been built up. So uh, if you're building a node, it's going to have all the fields in that crazy array syntax. And then the second parameter is going to be the source row. So, um, you know, whatever came out of the database or out of your um, CSV file. And uh, this is a great place if you've got a field that you don't have a, a field handler for. Um, you can just go ahead and hack it into that array structure. And, you know, or if you need to make some other changes, it's, a, it's an easy place to do that. And then the, the last one is uh, complete, which gets called once the um, entity's been saved. So if you need to, you know, say, send out an email or something with the new ID, you could do that here. Um, one thing I will point out is if you're calling node save or entity save on the, if you're, if you're resaving the thing you just imported, you're probably doing something wrong. Um, the one kind of useful thing that I'd seen was in um, commerce migrate. They needed to, there's the orders and the line items and they both need to know the IDs of each other. Um, so 
what they were doing in there was after, so you'd create the order, then you'd create the line items, and then you'd go back and tell once, as each you know line item finished, it would go tell the order, hey, here's a new line item. Or it might have done in the other order, but that, that, that's one kind of like legitimate use of that that, that I've run into. Um, so one, one other kind of thing you'll run into, and this is, this is one of those where this is what makes Migrate really, really nice, is dealing with circular, circular dependencies. Um, you know, this, this is like one of those that I kind of bang my head against with some custom scripts. Um, you know, say you've got, uh, well, one, one example I ran into with another commerce migration was um, if you're there, they've got like kind of a user profile for, for the billing and the shipping information and a user, right? So the user has two uh, entity references to the billing and shipping information and the, um, the, shipping, the shipping and billing profiles both have a user ID. So which do you create first? How do you get that in there? And the, the answer is you, you know, use a stub. So um, you go ahead and uh, if you're importing, you know, depend, it's going to depend on which one you want to import first. But um, you, you know, just go ahead and create a dummy user and then, you know, get your profile set up and then you go back and, you know, match them up or, or whatever. Um, and so the way you do that is you specify the source migration on the field mapping and then um, the, the, the migration that, uh, sorry, I'm gonna screw up the naming on this because I, I, I need to give them some names. So if you, you've got your first migration that's running along and, and what it's gonna try to do is it's gonna say, okay, go look up this ID in the source migration for me. It goes and looks, it doesn't exist. So then it, it calls that second migration that it just checked and, and didn't have and it gives it a chance to go ahead and create a new record. And it doesn't really put anything in there, it just creates it, gets the ID, saves the ID back into the map, and then lets the first migration continue on. Um, and then when the second migration gets run, it, because it's got the ID in the map, it just goes ahead and updates that record, fills out the rest of the information, and then you're able to kind of move on. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's basically that process. Um, so now I'm gonna just try to kind of summarize the way that the, the import flows through here. Um, I've got this next slide that I'm gonna kind of do a little reading off of because um, it's sort of hard to keep it all in your head. This is like a nice little reference slide. Um, so the, the way that it's gonna start is the um, migration is gonna ask the source for a record and it's gonna keep grabbing a record and then it's gonna look at it in the prepare row. And if it skips it, it's gonna keep skipping in until it finds one that you know is, is okay. And then um, whatever changes you've made in your prepare are gonna be kind of carried forward. Um, the migration will go ahead and apply all those field handlers to transform the, the data into the, uh, into the, you know, sort of the entity format of, of all those nested arrays. Uh, once that's done, the migration is gonna call the prepare function and let you do any final modifications on the entity. Um, then, the, the de then it hands it to the destination. The destination will go ahead and save that entity and then it gets passed back to the um, migrations uh, complete function and then um, the migration saves the new and old IDs into the migration map. So, um, yeah. So if you've got a contrib module, um, there's the two, two kind of places where you can um, help. One would be uh, providing a destination. So like, uh, and if, if, if it's uh, something where you've got your own structure, like a web form submission, um, you know, if you provide a destination, then, uh, you know, people will, will love you. Um, if you're doing, uh, oh, the other would be a field handler. So hopefully you won't need to. If it's an entity, uh, there's actually some pretty good work that's been done on that as part of the uh, Commerce Migrate module. So there's that issue that you can go look at and, and um, kind of just base it off that. Um, but if, 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 if not, uh, Migrate Extras has some pretty good sample code that you can use to kind of uh, figure out how to go about writing a destination. Um, on the other side would be like a field handler. So if you've got a CCK field like you're doing, um, well, address field and uh, you know email field and phone field have support, but um, if it's a single value field, like if you've just got you know uh, one value that you write, you can extend um, the migrate simple field handler and very easily provide support. Um, if you look at uh, uh, what we actually do in migrate uh, things for like the user uh, user reference and the uh, uh, node reference. 
uh, those those fields um, use that. Um, so I'll just put this up and kind of ask what what kind of questions do you guys? Uh, uh, actually, uh, grab the mic back there in the middle of the in the middle of the row. I just wondered if you would make the slides available to us. Yeah, they're, they should be on the presentation um, note on the conference, so you can download them off there. Uh, it says a PDF right now. Oh, is it? They had a, they had a multi-value file field on there like two weeks ago, and I had like a bunch of different versions, and then sometime since then they changed it to a single value field, and. So, okay, I'll, I'll, put the, I'll put a PDF up there. Well, I want to thank everybody who's worked on the module. My use case was importing 150,000 records every month um, and on a continual basis, so Migrate uh, is hefty enough to do the job. I found a hook uninstall in the uh, Migrate install file that uh, um, was commented out, some code that uh, um, it uh, got rid of the tables for the Migrate messages, and that's how I was able to reset and begin a new monthly import each time, and it would clear out all the messages, all the stuff that was there, so begin again. Is there a better way to do that? To well, wipe it clean, wipe it fresh, and then start another? So on your source thing, do you, you don't wanna keep the ones you've imported? Um, all the information, once it's imported, I wanna um, start a new migration completely fresh. I don't want to do any, all the mappings and everything else is gone. Are the IDs changing on the There source are side? actually no IDs that come in, it's all, um, basic text and so, um, but yeah, that once they're created and in, um, then I can just drop all those. So that it was really nice. It said, you know, select from uh, the schema information <laughs> table name and then drop those. But uh, does anybody else uh, um, that okay. you know of any use cases for that? Oh, deregister migration, Mike says. Yes. Okay. I don't know if that if that helps. If not, come up and chat with us afterwards. Yeah. So deregister because um, I keep the um, all the module information there, but deregister then will clear out those tables with the messages and. He's, he's nodding yes. So. Okay. Yes, I'll take that as yes. Thank you. I'm uh, working on a site that has a content type that really should have been three from the start. Is migrate something that would help me split all of those existing nodes into three nodes or more? <laughs> you could, yeah, so one thing that migrate, I guess I, you know, in my whole uh, selling on migrate, uh, one thing it doesn't do great is uh, dealing with like Drupal sites because there's like the 15 different joins as soon as you start adding CZK fields. Um, so if, if they're actually, if it's on the same site, you can kind of um, get, you can, you can sort of be a little sneaky and you could in your source, just go build your query to select your nodes and then just select the node ID. And then in your prepare, you can call node load in there. And so that, that's how you could kind of get it. But then since it's all in that, that crazy nested array structure, you're gonna have to do some flattening on that. Um, but it would be pretty, it would, it would probably work pretty well for that because you could go through define your fields on the source type, um, and then uh, be able to specify, you know, you, it, would be, it would become three migrations, right? Uh, one for each of the node types that you'd be creating. Um, but you, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I think it would probably be a, you would be able to do that pretty, it's one of those, how many nodes you have too, that's kind of the other thing, because if it's like 50 nodes, you know, maybe like. Uh, there's there's uh, about 1,000 at this point. Yeah, then, I mean, I, I think it would be a reasonable fit for that. So my question is about dependencies. If, you, if you've got a row that essentially has um, a column on it that would indicate a, a, a node reference, but you're essentially free tagging them, right? So when it comes across it, that node reference might be by title, but it may or may not exist yet. Um, I guess, could you speak to how, I guess, out of the box, those field handlers, I guess, are handling that? Or would you do sort of a chain dependency of, first of all, go through all the records and create those nodes? And do you get where I'm sort of going with that? Uh, say a little bit more on kind of, you're saying sort of the free so say tagging. So you, say you have, you know, five uh, 
rows and uh, you know row number one has a has a column that's out to node A, but node A doesn't exist yet. Three, four, and five point to node A. Is that would I just create that? Would I just create that programmatically at well, some point that's, here? That's where that create stubs would probably come in handy because it sounds like um, if you can't order your source so that those things, you know, sometimes it's kind of like obvious the way you're going to do it, right? Like just the node IDs are going to be, or the, you know, source IDs are going to be in such an order that like you can kind of get the parents ahead of the children. But if not, um, that, that, uh, the, the create stub, um, it doesn't have to be a different migration. It can be, it can kind of be in itself. That's sort of what the taxonomy terms do because, uh, for the hierarchical ones, you, you know, you can kind of get these, these orders where, the parent doesn't exist yet, but the child is kind of pointing to it and you want to know what the new ID is. So that's, uh, th that's exactly what it would do. It goes in and it's going to create it. It's going to create it with like a empty turn name or whatever. And then, you know, when it finally gets down to it, it's going to go ahead and fill that one out. It's going to, it's got the ID already in the map. So it knows, okay, here's the one I need to fill out with that information. So that makes sense on the first row, but then is, is the stub implementation smart enough to know that it already created a stub? And yes. re okay. Yeah, because it looks in the map when it when it when it first thing it does when it pulls up a record is it goes to look in the map to see if it um, if it's already been imported, and that's how it can do the updates rather than um, you know duplicating a bunch of of, uh, of records. Thanks. Welcome. My use case is to uh, migrate a PHP BB forum into uh, Drupal Commons discussions, and my question is um, to create something on a destination, and this is Drupal 7, do you always rely on the fields API, or how do you know how to create the record properly? Um, <clears throat> I'm guessing that it's not a good idea to just write SQL and write rows to the actual Drupal database, right? So there's gotta be a better way of creating records. Well, so for the destination side, for, for like a comment, uh, yeah. there's already a destination for that. So okay. uh, it, it knows the kind of built-in, um, what do they call them, like properties on the entity, right? Those fields that are on that base table. And then it, uh, the, the way that the fields are actually implemented, there's a destination handler that goes and like looks up the entity and figures out what fields and then it kind of passes through to the, uh, to, to loading the right field handler. So um, it's, it's kind of a two-step thing, right? There's the fields that are on the base um, entity and then there's all those, uh, I always want to call them CCK fields, but I guess mm -hmm. that's, you know, Drupal fields. Um, that then get kind of populated. So I think it should be setting those up for you. Um, and, and that's one of the things where the UI is really handy is it'll show you all the fields that the destination is, is listing. And so you can kind of basically go through and copy those in and then, um, you know, go look at the destination tab and go copy and paste and then kind of match them up that way. Okay. Um, and you know, it turns out I probably would have had time to, uh, to, to show some of that. Um, I mean, I guess we could probably go into that if, uh, you know, if we get through the questions and people still want to see some stuff. Thank you. Yeah, my question is related to performance. And like, uh, based on your experience using this module, like, um, what's a kind of a good number before things time out on running this process? Like if you have like a million customers which we want to import from one system into Drupal, can we use this, and if we can, um, can we go in one go, or do we have to like schedule it for like uh, that? And sorry, and related to that, the second question is, if for example it breaks in the middle, like when we are importing, does it roll back everything, uh, or? Then this, 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 it might actually be worth kind of showing it. So there's the two ways that you can do it. Through the UI, it uses the batch API, um, which is slower, but. Uh, just if you're familiar with Drupal's batch API, it kind of runs for a second, stops, runs for a second, stops, so that you avoid the PHP um, time limit. The Drush mode um, just ef effectively disables the time limit, and um, well, actually, I think it's got some kind of trickiness, so it kind of spawns subprocesses to avoid that. But um, basically, it you don't you don't have to worry about uh, timeouts with it. But um, if uh, if you stop it in the middle because it keeps track of everything in the migration map, it knows what's already been imported, so then it'll just kind of scan through the records until it finds one that hasn't been imported and then carry on from there. Um, so you should be able to, uh, uh, you know, res resume it with, without any problems. 
but in the middle of the migration, if there is an error which happens or something, does it roll back? No. It well, if if the record gets created, the record got created on the destination side, um, and in some cases it'll be sitting there just spewing errors, and you know, depending on what you've got going on in your code, it might just be spewing errors, and like, you know, so fields are not getting set up right, but nodes are getting created, um, but you know, and so then you control C, stop it, and it's those nodes are still going to be there. It's not gonna um, not gonna do that. You can you can manually roll those back and have those deleted, or you could. Um, rerun the the um, uh, migration and uh, there's a there's an upgrade or update uh, flag you can specify to have it um, update the records that are already on the on the on the site so that's an easy way to kind of resolve some of those um, you know if you have a if you have a, a bug in your migration that's how you can kind of fix that does this module provide some kind of logging that we can check that what's completed what's not yeah, you know like let me just let me hop out of here and go Let's pull up. Um, yeah, because it does it does log. Um, okay, let me. Oh, you know what I'm gonna have to do? I'm gonna have to switch the. Uh, I'm gonna have to because otherwise I'm not gonna be able to see the thing while you're seeing it. So here's our Drupal 7 site. And um, so the migrate UI lives in um, a, a tab on the content page. And uh, it'll list out all of the migrations it knows about, show the amount of uh, you know, rows they've got, what the kind of status is. And it'll try to track the uh, throughput and when the migration was last run. Um, and then you can go kind of click into one of them and get a little bit more detail. Um, I think there's a bug in here that I had I noticed earlier, but didn't really want to try to trick down. Um, so to list the overview, it, it actually has some kind of uh, abilities to kind of track um, uh, sort of metadata about the migration. You can kind of associate people with it. Um, I found that kind of to maybe be a little bit more trouble than it was working worth, but um, I guess it depends on your organization. And then you know you can kind of look at the destination. Um, so if we uh, Let's just go and like run a couple of these, and then just you can kind of see the, you know, see what see what this half. You know, there's 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 uh, here's the list of operations it supports. You can do an import, you can do a rollback, um, you can stop a migration that's in progress, um, or uh, and so sometimes like if it, they'll they'll get kind of wedged, and then you can reset it. Um, but here's sort of the uh, here's what kind of the batch API looks like, and so it'll tell you you know what got created, and then. Um, inside the migration, there's um, where did the log stuff live, Mike? Wasn't there a log tab? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. So. Um, where am I? I'm totally missing this. Sick. Oh yeah. Okay. Right. So here's the uh, so here's where the message you can see kind of like um, so this was uh, probably thrown as a warning um, and so those that's where those will get logged. Um, do, yeah. Want to next question? I guess. Kinda. How do you deal with attachments like images or other uploaded files? They're kind of a pain. <laughs> um, the uh, the the. That's actually one of the kind of the drivers of the sub of that kind of the, the fixing the arguments thing because that, that little example that I'd showed in that one slide was sort of doing an image field. So where you give it a path and you give it um, that kind of stuff. It works, but there's definitely some kind of issues with it. Um, what I would sort of say for uh, is, is look in the beer and wine. They, they both have um, samples for dealing with files. Um, but it does kind of suck. Thanks. Uh, so you mentioned that this wasn't really um, easy to do for taking content from one Drupal site into another Drupal site. Um, and that's actually my use case is 
migrating an old broken site into a new rewritten awesome site. Um, so other ways to make that an easier transition or is there something other than migrate that you would suggest trying to use? Well, there's some new stuff that, do you, do you want to just talk about that, Mike? Do you want to talk about the D2D? Because one of the things that's getting, uh, you should probably just grab one of the mics. Um, one of the things that, that's kind of coming up in, in Drupal 8 is dropping update.php to do the major version migrations and using migrate instead. Um, and, and so you've been working on some kind of like stuff uh, there is an experimental module, Migrate D2D, for doing Drupal to Drupal migrations. It's in my sandbox, so it's a little bit hidden. But if you go to my profile, find me, Mike Ryan, on Drupal.org. Under my projects, you find my sandbox. And right now, it works for your basic Drupal 6 to Drupal 7 objects. Um, other people are contributing Drupal 5 to Drupal 7. And um, it, it's early, but it, it, I've just used it successfully on a client project. Thanks. I've done some kind of like nasty things where we had one that we sort of had to keep the site up and running. So I ended up kind of writing this custom web service module to just export them all as JSON um, because I found it a lot easier to have Drupal tell me what fields were on there rather than trying to join everything manually. And just then I had the code kind of flatten that. Um, it wasn't great enough that I really want to release, but um, yeah, and then you kind of have two problems. You've got, uh, the, you get to deal with the JSON trying to talk to it. So um, I, I am excited to have an excuse to try out Mike's project. Hi, um, I have a source that I'm migrating to two different type of uh, nodes, two different content types. Um, so I'm running it through the prepare row so I can return false and having two separate migrations. Is that the best way to do that, or? What's it stored in? Is it a SQL table, or is it like a CSV file, or is it's it something? It's a SQL type table. Oh, so it's then. It's coming from, a, the source is a SQL table. I would probably try to do, to restrict that using a where clause on the, um, the SQL query, because then you avoid, then the counts are gonna show up, right? Yeah, okay. Um, I think that would be the best, and then you, you know, then you'll show the counts, because otherwise you'll see all those numbers skipped, because yes. it'll in the logging it reports, and then it keeps skipping the ones that it it. And so it it's going to slow record. it down because yeah. it actually loads all those records, hands it to your migration, and then um, right. you say nope, no thanks, and then it yeah. goes to the next one. But you would still do two separate migrations because you have to declare the content type in the. Yes. You because they have mostly the same fields. Uh, would there be a an option to in the prepare to change the node type? Or what is I would that do is do a do one if it's basically the same fields. Then I would do a um, I would just do a subclass of the migration, and then you could uh, say specify everything. But the um, you know you could just you could just have separate queries and then pass those into the source separately. Like you could have the base thing where you set up all the the fields and and whatnot, and then in your subclass, you would, okay. the only thing you would change would be the source. But definitely two, two separate migrations, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. This is kind of a follow-up question. It's interesting, a couple people have already kind of touched on this. It's something that I was wondering about myself. And so you've mentioned that Drupal to Drupal maybe isn't the best right now, but then Mike was saying, but there is something in the works that maybe they would take six to seven or like five to seven. And so I'm wondering if, is there any discussion like with Drupal core in terms of like, the way that like D8 and D9 and whatever's gonna be built so that maybe we can have like better integrations so that, like one person was saying, so like if we had our Drupal 6 site that's, you know, we've got the certain ways that things weren't uh, fieldable entities. So we built the site in a certain way that now that 7 allows you to have the field of en entities. Is there any kind of discussion going on in the Drupal community now about building Drupal in a way that it's going to be able to then plug in cleanly to using something like migrate, because that's what it seems to me like as well. It's like if you can take a WordPress site into a Drupal site, why can't we take a Drupal site into a Drupal site and well, go, just avoid this whole pain of trying to say, well, I'm on Drupal whatever, and then I've got to get to the next, and the next, and the next, why can't? I think that's exactly the conversation that, that's kind of starting, and you know, and, then, and the kind of the difference between the WordPress one is it's, a, you know, you've, you've got a lot, it's sort of the same reason it's easier to do themes in WordPress, right? There's just a lot less you know, dumb stuff you can do to kind of configure it in strange ways. Whereas in Drupal, you know, you, we give you all sorts of rope to, you know, hang yourself. And, you know, you get, you can put 50 different fields on something and, you know, 
Um, I did one migration where they had, you know, literally dozens of content types and then like hundreds of fields. And um, that was the one that I did that JSON thing on because it was like, there's no way I'm going to do all these, you know, queries to, or figure out how to do the, the, the um, SQL queries to do that. So I think that's definitely part of the conversation is figuring out how you build sources in such a way that, you know, and, and the nice thing is if it's locked to a, to a version, right, um, you can say, okay, here's what CCK on D6 look like. And so it can go do the introspection in the tables, figure out how to do all the joins, and then kind of just build that for you. Um, versus like right now where, you know, the, you know, the D7 migrate doesn't really know what a D6 site look like. And so, um, you know, it's, it's just that, that first pass, the, fir the, the kind of the first thing that's easy to do is get all the SQL stuff and then the kind of, you know, building that layer on top of it. And so um, I think we've got, you know, some kind of like good building blocks and then it's exactly what you're talking about. Like, how do you start setting it up so that, you know, Drupal 7 knows how to, you know, hand itself off. Yeah, well, because I'm thinking, not, I mean, what's done is done in the past. Five was built, it was built, six was built, seven, but I'm, I'm wondering, like, going forward here, if that's kind of like the thought process is so that, I'm not saying that we should be able to take a Drupal 5 site to a Drupal 10 site, but starting with eight or like, or nine or something, that it's kind of be built into Drupal itself, that like this whole upgrade process of getting from eight to nine, for instance, or from eight to 10 or from nine to 10, will just be an easier thing for us so that we aren't kind of caught in the situation of when we're building a site for somebody and thinking like, oh God, you know, what, that's kind of more what I'm after is like looking forward to the future here. If we're going to maybe have a just sort of a more natural kind of plug and play way that Drupal itself is aware of the migrate module. So it's just like it's much more of a snap to get from. Um, there is a um, core issue to put um, something based on the migrate API into core for Drupal 8. So um, if there's an issue out there and tomorrow one o'clock um, I'm hosting a BOF to talk about that. Uh, I think it's room 210. So if you're interested in that, uh, drop by. Thank you. I guess the one thing I, I would kind of add to that is that you don't necessarily know where you're going to be, so it's sort of hard to future-proof because, you know, 640K should be enough, right? Uh, my use case is that I'm using the address field module with three addresses, a specific number. And so the CSV file that I have has three, three different sets of fields, for one for each address. So, uh, and that gets, that would be uh, using the geocoder module as well to uh, query Google and geocode that. I'm wondering if that, if you know, if you've had experience doing that type of thing. Or I actually you know wrote about the status of the a field handler for the address fields. And that's kind of where I realized that our argument thing is totally busted. Um, because what it does is it you for the for the field you specify the country code and then you pass everything else through the arguments and it's kind of tedious. But if you look in migrate uh, migrate extras um, in the I think it's in the two three version. It's the one that just just recently came out. Um, so that might have been why you missed it. Uh, or if, I mean, if you went looking, I haven't. I have actually haven't done any research into this. Oh, okay. So this yeah. was kind of a, a good session for me to get to because this is on my plate this week. So. Oh yeah, it 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 uh, it's a little tedious to set up, but it'll definitely do it. And it you so you just kind of key all the arguments based off of um, I forget what uh, they're. It's actually pretty well documented. Um, so I, I would say I would say pull that up and, and give it a look because it should uh, it, it it should address that pretty well. If right, you'll thanks. pardon the pun. Any any other questions? Do you guys want me to poke around and drush? Because I think we've got easier question. And back to your original slide steep learning curve. Uh, our migration, I believe, is much simpler. Not 10,000 uh, entities uh, coming out of another database into XML and then into Drupal. Uh, it would seem that there might be an easier approach. I think we got a one-to-one -one match. Um, can you comment on that? Because it seems that the learning curve to get to use migrate is, migration is going to be pretty difficult here. What, what else are you looking at using? I'm guessing feeds. I mean, how big is the XML file? Excuse me? Do you know how big the XML file is? Um, is it a single file or is it? Well, they're about, uh, they're about 30 fields. 
Oh, I'm just in in, in total because like uh, 30 you, fields per inch in, per entry and about 10,000 entries. So like 100 megs, 200 megs. Yes. Because yeah, I mean, I, I had one where it was trying to do a 900 meg thing, and um, yeah, I don't think Feeds is going to be happy with that because it because the the problem with so one of the things that we ended up building in um, a I think the recent version of Migrate is uh, once you get the big XML files like that, it's hard to, because PHP runs out of memory. So, I mean, you can kind of just bump your memory up really, you know, to okay. whatever gig kind of thing. So but I think my, my problem is not as trivial as I was hoping it was. Yeah, um, you can do, uh, I'm just spacing on. Um, So he's suggesting in feeds you can do the background, yeah, background process. I th it, it just depends on the size, because that's that's going to be the one that because like trying to do uh, an XPath queries gets slow too is the other thing. Like um, I'm, I'm I'm just basing on the name of it. There's a there's a, a way you can do XML files um, like X X whatever. Basically you don't have to load the whole file. It just runs through the tokens and then you can kind of grab subsets of it and then just process those. Um, and, and depending on the size of the file, that might be worth it. If it's small enough, or if you can chunk it up, um, you know. But give, yeah, give it give it a try with feeds. If it's a single type, then you know if you can Thanks. get that working. Yeah. Anybody else? Do you guys want to see me poke around with Rush a little bit, or okay? All right. So, oops, I'm. Oops, that's no, too small. Okay, um, so boy, this is there is really no worse way to try to type than in front of an audience. Okay, so um, we'll just do Drush help to list out the uh, the kind of the, the the commands. So there's this big block of migrate commands, right? Most of them have little aliases. Um, I'm just going to kind of show a couple that. Um, so you know. Drush MS for migrate status is is kind of you know nice for just sort of seeing where things are at right. You can kind of see that okay the term finished, user finished, um, and so to run one you can uh, it's a Drush MI for migrate import, and so it'll go off and you know tells you when it gets done tells you how many it did um, you know what uh, you know what what worked what didn't and give you kind of a a, a throughput. Um, and most of these have, uh, you know, some kind of switches. Um, oh boy, that's not really readable. Um, so one thing that, like, a lot of times you'll be kind of debugging a migration, and you want to keep kind of running the same record. Um, so what what I'll find myself doing is uh, doing an update because that'll rerun the migration and update the records. Um, and then you can specify a limit. Um, this I hate. You have. I think it got fixed, but you have to. So one item. Oh, okay, so now you can just type one. Oh, okay. Uh, did I? So, so it'll just keep running that same one record. So if it's kicking out a bunch of warnings, um, you know that's kind of handy. Um, I wonder if I can get something that's going to take long enough that I can cancel it. Um, I guess I could stick a wait in there or something like that, but. Is that spelled right? Um, here, we'll just do minus minus all, which will just grind through all the um, imports that it has. So you can see it's going to kind of look at the ones that are already done. It'll just work its way down the list. Did we hit baseball there? Okay, so we got something going slow. So you know, I'm like, hey, I don't know what's going on here. Let's just kill it, and then we can do, you know, Drush MS, and it'll show us. Uh, okay, so oh, it thinks it's still importing, right? Well, it's not importing because I hit Control C. So um, we're going to go uh, copy that. Drush MRS, um, Drush misses, Drush migrate reset or something. I don't know, 
it's some of those you just kind of memorize. Um, and so then, uh, and oh, for the status, you can actually specify a migration status so you don't have to pick through the whole list. So, okay, it was going along, it got kind of stuck. Um, and, and that's sort of how you'd uh, reset that when they, when they fall over. Um, what else am I, what's, what's, oh yeah, let's do a rollback. So, so we just, oh, MR, yeah, Drush, Drush Mister. They're both stern, uh, stern folks. One resets and the other deletes. Um, so yeah, it's going to sit there and you know kind of grind along, and then when it gets done, it'll tell us you know how long it took to delete all that stuff. Um, I kind of let it run a little too long, I think. Yeah, so you know then it'll it'll tell you kind of what what it did. Um, any other questions? Everybody happy? I think like I said, there's another. Uh, migration session in here directly after this so you know stick around if you've been having fun <laughs>